my channel for those of you who are new to the channel a big welcome it's lovely to have you today is not so much a color along um, it is more of a color and chat so um, I have decided to experiment a lot and I also want to chat about um, what, what you can expect during June and July um, as far as the videos I'll upload or won't upload, um, my completed pages videos and all of that. So um, I'll start first with my experimenting and then as I'm doing the background on this page in Mythographic Paradise, I will talk to you about um, the upcoming things for the channel. So as you may know, um, a lot of the common backgrounds in adult colouring is um, with things like soft chalk pastels, um, pencils, watercolour paints, acrylic paints, uh, Neocolor 2s, ink tents, um, what else? Some people do use oil pastels and um, so there's a lot of variety. Uh, distress inks, different types of inks is another one that you can use when it comes to doing your backgrounds. But Distress Inks and I, I'm not so sure if we really like each other yet and I don't want to go and spend um, a small fortune on getting a big collection of Distress Inks only to find out that we still don't get along. So I've put that on the shelf until um, I'm further in my colouring journey and I can explore that another day. But I have tried um, just very basic chalk pastels. I've done very basic um, Neocolor 2 backgrounds. I've done work with ink tents. I've experimented here and there with watercolor. As far as mediums go, there are two mediums or two art mediums that I least like. Oil pastels and watercolor pencils. Now, um, sorry, not watercolor pencils, watercolors, so watercolor paint. Oil pastels are just a big mess. Um, I get it all over my hands and I, I don't like mess. It When I try making something with oil pastels, it just looks like, well, <laughs> it looks like my, one of my kids would have done. And th I think there is, in a way, um some positives in that I think when it comes to painting actual paintings like oil paintings or acrylic paintings and um, oil pastels and me it brings out the child side of me not the adult side so um, I've learned in my art journey there is the side of me that actually tends towards um, abstract and there is the other side of me a very strong side of me that prefers realism and is always aspiring um, to things being realistic and um, doing really really well at it and, and all sorts of things so we could psychoanalyze that um, and be here for a really long time but um, watercolors are I think if I had more practice with them and I was more patient with watercolors and with myself I think we could possibly get on but Watercolors for me are, um, because you have to use so many layers to get a rich color, they often look washed out and I don't really like that washed out look. And then there's also the fact that um, you can't control watercolor as well as you can with pencils. Now, one of the reasons I prefer coloring and drawing to painting is because I have more um, hand control with my tools like with my pencils than I do have with um, a paintbrush so those fine details are um, a bit of a challenge for me you know when you're doing oil painting um, you have to have such a steady hand and ve be very precise and use a very thin paintbrush and my fine motor skills aren't as good as I'd like them to be so um, you may be asking okay what's What's all this to do with your experiment? Well, I haven't got um, gouache paints, which is a kind of between watercolor 
paint and acrylic paint. So gouache is a water, is a type of watercolor paint, but it is more opaque. Um, but it's not a full acrylic. Um, you can water it down with water and create more of a watercolor effect, or you could use it straight and it would have um, more of an acrylic type look, so it'd be more opaque. Now, I don't have that, um, I don't have a lot of, I've only got gold acrylic. I don't have any other acrylic at home. I don't have any um, gouache. I do want to get. And it got me thinking. And I realized that many years ago when I was doing um, oil painting, uh, my husband went and he bought me a gift. And in the gift he bought me was the set of Winsor Newton oil paints. And I thought to myself, well, before I go and buy more art supplies that could potentially just sit on the shelf, not doing anything, how would oil paint work in a coloring book? And I've got them, so I, it's worth experimenting. I could also test to see if they are dry and, and clogged up or if they're still good. Because I haven't used them much, um, it looks like they are still in good working order and I can use them. So I went and I've already experimented with it. Um, I went into Hannah Carlson's Magical Dawn and I picked a page that is a whip, a page I'm not overly thrilled with to experiment my oil pastels on. So I did this background here. If I just bring you out a bit. And it's dry. It's not going. I've got an extra piece of paper just to protect the other page. And if you turn over on the other side, um, besides a little mistake here where it's my paintbrush spilt over, it hasn't really bled through. There is a little bit of places where it can um, shine out. But it's nothing that's, I just realized my light was off. It, there's nothing here that is stopping me coloring this page and making it really, really beautiful. So I'm going to leave it for a few weeks and see, does the oil in the oil paint actually come out and stain on the other side? What is the long-term effect of oil paint. Now, my theory is, if people are using oil pastels in coloring books, then using oil paint shouldn't be much different. Um, oil paint and oil pastels are both based in oil with a lot of pigmentation. Um, acrylic is a paint that is water-based, so you can use water to move it about, um, to rinse things through, um, with oil paint, you would use a m mineral spirit like turpentine or one of these um, Windsor & Newton have a low odor solvent and, and you can use that and that reacts well with the paint and helps you apply it onto your canvas or in my case onto the paper um, quite well. So because these, the Hannah Carlson books are um, have pictures on both sides. I don't want to carry on using oil paints on books with um, two-sided pictures. I really enjoy my books and I want to look after them. So I decided Mythographic Paradise was a good book to continue my experimenting because it's single-sided. So anything that bleeds through here is not necessarily going to impact on this page especially if I put paper between the two. So, um, you may be wondering, well, Ailey, there's not a lot of colors. That's right. I don't have every color I need as far as, you know, different purples and pinks and all of that. But what I do have are blue, blue, yellow and red which are my primary colors. I have got a green, and then I've got um, a black, a white, a burnt umber, and a yellow ochre. Now, in all honesty, that's all I need. I 
don't need anything else because I can mix these colors and create really beautiful um, colors for my background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the blue, some black and a bit of white and I'm going to create it with the red and I'm going to put it out on my Tupperware lid. Um, you can use glass for water paint as well as for oil paint. Um, so like your acrylics, your water watercolors. Um, I don't have glass, but I do have this plastic tray. Well, it's a Tupperware lid that I've converted into a tray. So I'm going to put my blobs on here. So I'm going to use a bit of black. Now you don't really need a lot because we're not covering a massive canvas. Um, I'm just using a, a page really. It's and it's not even the whole page. I'm just doing the background. And then I'm going to use some more white. So about eight years ago, I um had a there was a lady in my church and she was a art teacher so I would go to her and join her art class during the week and um, she taught me a bit about painting and a bit of color theory and it really really was a lot of fun so I'm just sharing and using those tips that she showed me um, I'm going to use here um, and as a disclaimer um, I wouldn't test this. Don't don't rush off to go and buy um, oil paints. You know, if you've got acrylic paints and you're happy with it, then you know, stick to that. Um, I'd rather we wait and see how this actually turns out um, after about a month or so, what it does to the page, before encouraging anyone to go and buy oil paints because. Um, I don't I don't I don't want you to to um, be led astray by my experimenting okay so I put out my colors and then we will start mixing them So that's more of the color I'm after. It's a bit more white. So I'd always rather just do little bits at a time and then pull out a whole lot. Um, so hopefully I can paint a gradient. And as I'm painting, I'll just chat to you about um, the plans well, what's to expect in June and July? So I'm just cleaning my brush off in the solvent. And I have this um, towel down here. I can just dab any excess off. All right, so because of the amount of um, hidden objects, I'm going to see where I can um, hide it. Okay. So we are having my mother-in-law coming um, in a couple of days. She's going to be staying with us for about four weeks. And so we're really excited that to see her. It's been about three years since we last saw her. At the most three years. Um, I think it's more two and a half years. And... We are just 
really excited that she's coming. We're planning on going on a road trip for two weeks. Um, so some of the places we're going has got Wi-Fi. Um, but we're going to be caravanning. Um, we quite like caravanning. So because of that, I at least for two weeks in June, I won't be able to do any recordings. Um, I have got a couple of videos. I can work on editing and uploading. Um, so there's a few things that I can put in place. <clears throat> so um, I'm also, because she's, we haven't seen her for so long and she's with us, um, I want to really be able to give her a lot of my time and uh, I don't know how much colouring I'm actually going to get done in June. I mean, for all I know, I could get a lot more done than I anticipate, but I really want the focus to be on my mother-in-law and to really just love on her and um, be a good daughter-in-law. Um, so... I'll be taking my some of my colouring books with me when we go caravanning. Um, I've got a... I was thinking I'm going to use Magical... Take Magical Dawn and... Oh, I've got a... Printed out some PDFs as well. So I might just take like one or two books and um, a set of pencils and really focus on my attention on that. And then when I'm home, hopefully I can do some <coughs> some colorings in the other books that I've got planned. Um, this weekend is a long weekend in the UK because it's the Queen's Jubilee. So I'm hoping I can start filming the next color along series we're going to do in the Rita Berman book. And... If I can get that going, then I can upload it while I'm and have it scheduled so that it's running by the time I come, you know, whilst I'm in on our uh, road trip. So I'm thinking it needs to be dark till about a third of the way. Um, Maybe a quarter if I've got one. Yeah, maybe a third of the way. Then here, I'm going to do the light color. I have to concentrate so hard when I'm painting because I really don't want to smudge. Now, if I want to spread this a bit more, I just have to use the solvent and it will spread it a lot better. So that's some of the things to expect on the channel in June and July. Um, I'm... I'm in two minds about whether I will uh, will do the end of the month, you know, what I colored in the month of June video, or whether I will end up combining it with July. Um, I think if I've only done about two or three pages, I might just skip June and go straight to July. Um, so that way you at least get to see a fair portion of colored works and um, and all of that um, so that's just something I'm tussling up about and I thought if I let you know then you know what to expect and you won't be taken by surprise if you see it you don't see a video
I'm just going to pick up a bit of solvent. Yeah, that definitely makes it spread much better. It's really tricky because you have all these fine details and you can't really, um, you know, you've got to flick the paintbrush. So I decided today to try my hand at making donuts and because I'm gluten free I had to um, I got a couple of recipe books focused on the gluten free style of cooking and baking um, so they're gluten free donuts and the last time I remember homemade donuts was my mom um, <clears throat> was when I lived in Mozambique and um, my mom would do a lot of baking. She baked bread and a couple of times she made rusks. And um, there was a time where she actually made us donuts. I was so yum. Um, I figured I'd just play around and have a treat with the boys. To be honest, it was also a moment of where I just needed peace and quiet. <laughs> So I could be in the kitchen and still available, but um, doing something different and focused. I'm not a fantastic baker. It's not my forte. But every now and then when you're in the mood, it, it's fun. Okay, so here I've got this saw, which is really in the way. So we're going to block it out. Let me know in the comments whether you think that this is a crazy idea or a good idea. I'd be curious to know. I mean, I did a YouTube search and I couldn't find any videos on YouTube where anybody had actually gone and used oil paints in a coloring book. Um, so we'll do the leaf there. So let's block this up like that. So with this, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to follow the line of the leaf. So I'm imagining that the leaf dips here and comes out. And that's how I will um, figure out where things go. And sometimes I'll end up painting over or or even whitening with a Posca pen. I'll go over something I shouldn't and then I either have to draw it back in or just work with it. Um, <clears throat> go too much into the whole you know, into these small, and it's really a lot of small nooks and crannies here. I think it's great practice this because it's teaching your eye to see what, you know, what is there and not, you know, when, how do I put it? With um, realism, when I Look at the um, professional artists who do realism art or even hyper realism and 
if they're running tutorials um, they often say you know color or draw what you see not what you think should be there and I find when there is an element of where your brain actually needs to switch off and then you start to see clearly and I find when that happens um, some of my best work can actually take place so here is a mushroom I think and there's one over here so I'm not sure what I want to do with that so I'll, I'll go around it and if I don't like it I can always um, go over it see it's I'm seeing I think it's flowers oh you know what it is okay so here is the leaf and these are the flowers so I mustn't go over those I watched the um, flip through of one of the latest mythographic books. I was so encouraged to see that they've taken away these um, hidden objects because I really find it so tricky to color pages with hidden objects. I mean, how do you balance the colors? So here, and yet I, you know those feathering strokes you use for hair or for fur. In some ways, you have to use the same thing with a paintbrush. You've got to just gently like guide the paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on with this and then I will come back to you with the next level and then the last level and um, you can see the progress because it's going to just be so boring watching me paint the whole thing. So I'll get back to you. Okay, so that's the first section done. Now I'm going to move on to this um, purpley blue and we will carry on with the rest so the purpley blue i'm going to come to about here and then i'll go into the lighter color again i'll just show you some of it and then i'll do the rest off camera so i want to come in and I start lower down with most of my paint because I want the bulk of it to be further down. And as I run out, I will go in and blend. Okay. And I'm also going to take a different brush. And I'm just going to, using it dry, just try and blend it into each other. Take my dry brush. So here's her arm, 
going through. I think I've cut it off on that side, so we'll pretend it's disappearing into the because it all goes up here as well, and then it disappears. Yeah, I'll think about the grass. I'm not sure if I'll do the grass with paint, or I might just use um, pencil. And I just use that to help blend it all out. Okay, I'm going to finish um, the next section and then I will come back with the last section. Okay, so now I'm going to go into my lightest color and do the rest of the page up to the grass and then I think I'm going to leave it because um, I'm not sure yet if I want to do the grass with paint or with pencil but if I did do it with paint it would be the same um, sort of concept so using my light color I'm going to carry on and then when I'm finished the page, I will do the white um, splotches. Um, I think with the, um, just white paint, I'm just going to pop on some white splots just to add to these um, bubble effects that uh, Fabiana has written, actually not written, drawn in. Okay, so now the thing with the solvent, um, if you have it in your container and you clean your brush the paint will actually go to the bottom so you don't want to touch the brush down to the bottom um, it will stir it up you just go very lightly um, on the surface and that will pick it up um, and that will help keep your paintbrush clean um, so because this is quite a large area here I'm going to come in with a bit of a bigger brush and I'm mixing a bit of solvent here and you can see it makes it lighter and I'm going to using the flat tip going against the lines And if it gets too narrow, I will then turn over to my next brush. It's nice to use a bigger brush.
and then when I clean these brushes I will use hot water and soap so just normal dish soap or washing up soap and um, it will clean the brushes really really well and I just use a back and forth motion so any good brush care is, is kind of what you would use um, you can do the same thing with your acrylic paint brushes Okay, so there we go. I've used this brush, which is um, on oil painting. You dip it in a bit of solvent and you go in small circular motions and it's supposed to very lightly blend everything um, together. But in the process on my page, it's also gone and colored over some of my actual um, leaves and flowers. But never mind, we will make a plan so i'm coming in with white now and what i'm going to do is i'm just trying to lighten this up and i'm going to use that black brush as well to help me now i don't want it white um But I do want it a light purpley lilac and then if I take this brush and I just go in circular motions over it I can blend it all out and this was one of my favorite things when it came to oil painting on the occasion I was allowed to use this brush I loved how it just blended over and with oil paints you can just carry on layering which is really fun Okay, so I hope that you've enjoyed watching me just experiment with oil painting, um, sorry, oil paints, and I hope that um, you've enjoyed just hearing a bit of what to expect in June. Um, it will be a bit of a play by ear, so I can't really do a full plan um, for June, but I think that I will be surprised how much I'm able to actually um, get done and how much I'll be able to also release onto the uh, channel. So I thank you for your support, I thank you for your patience, I thank you for your understanding um, and I do look forward to seeing you in all my other videos. I'm hoping to do a bit more video on skin tone. So I do remember that was a request and I haven't forgotten. And I'm hoping to be able to um, release some skin tone tutorials for you very soon. So if you are interested in that, um, Please let me know in the comments specific skin tones you would like me to show you and I can start planning them and picking out photo, um, photos for them as well as um, colouring pages um, and do my best to get it filmed. And what I might do with those um, pictures is I won't necessarily do a full page, I might just do skin tone put the skin tone up as a tutorial and then you can um, do that and then i might finish those pages either in different
colour alongs or um, on my own. So do let me know in the comments what you prefer, what you like, what are your thoughts. Um, I hope that this has been a fun, just quick little chat with you. It's actually, <laughs> I really enjoyed it and considering that I had a bit of a bad day today, it was really good for me to be able to just sit down and do a bit of painting. And I love colouring um, according to my mood because I find when I listen to my mood it really I'm listening to myself and I'm giving myself what I really need and I think that's part of the beauty of colouring as um, you know a form of therapy and just managing our emotions and our well-being. Right. And if I carry on using this, and if it does work out, um, then I think I'll get much better with blending this out and my sh pa paintbrush strokes will be a lot smoother. So there you have it. That's my oil paint background. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put some cling film over it and that should keep it um, moist and um, ready for the next time I need it and I'll have to just think of other backgrounds I can use this paint on so that way it doesn't go to waste right thank you so much for joining me I hope you've had um, a great time and a good chat with me be sure to like subscribe comment below if you'd like to see more of these and I will see you in the next video take care